Hey folks, we have returned. Challenge series has returned. It's the start of the third year of the challenge series, and with it comes ten brand new rookie drivers. Um, another handful that are looking to amp up the number of championships they attempt to run in, branching out to different cars. And an update to the tier list system, which means that, you know, cars, not only are more cars encompassed, but I know exactly how fast they are and what tiers they should be in. Um, even though we've already had one blunder in testing where we had a car in this tier that was, should never have been in tier A. Anyway, we'll get into the, uh, get into the different drivers and their vehicles as the racing goes on. So let's just waste no time and get into Silverstone International. We are here, starting grid of the first race at Silverstone International. So there's, it's basically the regular Silverstone, but, um, we just cut. We basically make a, sh a sudden right after the first couple of corners, and we don't rejoin until the back straightaway. So ultimately, this track has like five, like seven, eight corners, as far as I'm concerned. Technically, it'd be a uh, ten, but I don't know. Who's counting anyway? Uh, Hikari and Gina are the are on the front row. Seems fitting. Uh, well, two of the first five drivers in the Challenge Series history. Now, if, uh, if only Nats Natsuki and Rashi were here, because then me and Gina, or me and Nitori are. Well, actually, I'm not here. But Nitori is down in 13th. I'm not here, and Natsuki's not here, and then after that it goes Shoji Hakure, Riley Blanchard, Dedrick Schwartz. It was like the big eight that came along first, that like kind of started the series. Beyond that, then the top 10 extends to uh, Eric Wojowski and Wayne Hansen. Anyway, into the race. Before I zone out any more than they already have. The all-wheel drive has one benefit on the fan line. Accelerating off the grid. Riley already under threat from Isabella in the Lotus, Lotus Elise. But she managed to keep a hold of third. Uh, maybe... He's still there. Oh, so that is a pretty pronounced corner there. So I guess we would call it, like... Nine turns. Using all of the road, Thomas O'Reilly does manage to hang on to third. Marzolna will get ahead of the Lotus Elise pretty easily, and Dom DePrisco is looking to do the same down the inside of Stowe. Kanashimi was prepared to follow him through if he made the pass, but suddenly a Mustang appeared, and that plan was ruined. DePrisco is still struggling now on the outside, going through the club section. We'll get the pass done on Isabella Flynn, and it is currently forcing uh, Marzolna way off track. This is, uh, this would be a disaster with F1 corner cutting rules if we were playing that game right now. Luckily we're not, so it doesn't matter. As Taylor Lynn gets ahead of Kanashimi. Your eyes do not deceive you. Travis Wilde, two-time Challenge Series champion and ten-time winner, is racing Tier A in an SUV. And 
no, it's not a complete joke either. This thing actually has pretty decent straight line speed. <clears throat> I don't know how often you'll get to use it, but it is there. And you might get to use it here if you can get a decent run going on uh, Tyler McIntosh up ahead. I mean, you can see the difference. This thing is catching up to a Mustang in a straight line. The Mustang was the previous top speed king of Tier A. And while I'm sure it's a more balanced package as far as cornering goes, it technically is now being outclassed by the KN in terms of straight line speed. Pablo Hernandez went for a pass on the car ahead, made a mistake, and now Tyler McIntosh has a chance to take 10th place back from the E92 driver. DeFrisco is on an absolute tear right now as he almost tears up the grass. A uh, reminder that he started 8th, he's now in 4th, he's only completed 2 laps of this race. His next target, Thomas O'Reilly's Mustang GT. Flynn and Thrasher are too wide, going into the weird international shortcut corner. Lin and Kanashimi, big curb hop for Taylor, just about smacked into the Mazda. I think she was trying to make the pass, and almost had it stuck before we got there. Manuel has had a race to forget so far for his debut, he's running last. Pablo Hernandez miles off track. Taylor seems to have lost a lot of ground from that curb hop, combined with the fact that the Lotus Elite is definitely not built for a straightaway, such as the back straight here. Zona and DePrisco fighting with O'Reilly, two, two debuting drivers versus one of the veterans with multiple wins to his name. Zona will pass the Countach, but find himself in the grass after messing up turn 10. Turn 10, turn 2. Hernandez runs the fastest lap in the race, but he's in 10th place, so I don't really know what that's establishing here. Kind of seen me too wide with Flynn. Meanwhile, I just saw Pablo take a swing at Tyler back there, but he did not get there. Going through the last set of corners, Flo and Steady wins the race for Hikari Taniguchi in the R34 Skyline. He wins the open race of year three in the Challenge Series. Gina plays the second, but Zelna actually got the upper hand on Thomas O'Reilly on the last lap. Another uh, another introduction, another new thing introduced into, with year three. Something I worked on filling out over the off season of this season of this, the off season of this season. Good English, not replay. Something I took the time to fill out during the off season of this series is a spreadsheet which lists every single driver who's ever won in the challenge series and tells you slash you how many wins they have and how many titles or championships they have won. There are four drivers with ten or more wins, only two with more than one championship, and nine or no ten drivers have won championships out of the twelve that have happened. So well, quick maths, you know. Two repeat champions, one of which isn't even one of the drivers that have more than 10 wins, so... 
And that, if you're curious, uh, notch has notched off win number eight for Hikari. Considering he's been a consistent competitor in every champion, in every year, multiple championships, he should have a decent number by now. And we, now we move on to Laguna Seca. And, uh... This will be an interesting a race to try and remember for one Manuel, or Marvin Manuel, as uh, this would basically be a home track, and it's his second race in the series, so... And I guess I can only, get all, I can, I can only go up from here for him, as Skyline's book ended the race results, but he finished dead last. You've arrived at the starting grid for Laguna Seca, and, uh, well, if Marvin Manuel was ever going to be given a chance to impress at his first home race in the Challenge Series, here would be it. He's not actually from North America, but he's close enough. He's pretty much as close as you can get without literally being from the United States. He's from North America, but he's not from the U.S. I don't know why I said that way. Um, and he's surrounded by <coughs> two drivers that are actually from America, from America, Thrasher and Taylor. This is literally Thrasher's home track. He lives just a handful of hours from it, so... And Hikari is in an okay spot. He's in sixth. He can maybe use his all-wheel drive powers to get himself a spot or two going into turn one off the grid. Um, Gina, however, is looking worse for wear down in 12th, so he's got some room to grow that margin, I think, possibly. All will drive powers go, but Thomas heads him right off, so he cannot go anywhere. He will instead be overtaken by Tyler McIntosh before we even get close to turn one. Almost looked like they were three wide. They they collide to uh, Pablo and Thrasher going through one. As Nutori arrives to try and take this position away from Hikari, but I do not think she'll succeed stuck on the outside of turn two. Uh, Manuel and Thrasher are too wide going into turn four. Thrasher may come out the victor here. And yeah, the Mustang's acceleration is too much for the Skyline to handle. And need for speed, this is not. The Skyline is not an I win button here. Oh my lord! The Prisco's already up five places. Tyler gets straight into the back of Thomas and nearly loses control of his car, attempting to outbreak the Lamborghini driver. He managed to keep it on the road just about, and I'm sure that probably only hurt his ego more than anything else. Meanwhile, Travis still running around in 11 feet. He'll eventually, I'm sure he'll eventually score something in this thing, and it's going to be hilarious when he does. Gina is here fighting for, I would even call this table scraps. Taylor has absolutely checked out. Well, not absolutely. As she misses the first corner. Never mind, she has not checked out. <laughs> She's, uh... She just went out to get pizza, I guess. I don't know. This hotel analogy is not going to get me anywhere. Uh, I guess you'd say it's Hotel California. <laughs> anyway, terrible jokes aside, uh, Thrasher might have a sudden urge to try and overtake going into this corner. He's going to appear on the inside lane. Can you get anything to stick? 
He stays there. The horse powered Mustang is going to carry him alongside the Elise. Taylor braving on the outside. She's got better cornering. Taylor is almost forced into the sand trap. Here comes Pablo Hernandez to join the party. Aggressive braking from Taylor. Thrasher braking kind of conservatively. They're still too wide going through the corkscrew. Taylor is back into the lead. That Thrasher's going to have to wait for the next lap. Oh my lord. I really think he's just lucky that Hernandez didn't smell blood in the water and throw it in on him. Thrasher may be in with another shot here as we head towards T1. Taylor breaks too aggressively again. She seems to be hard to have a hard time identifying that braking zone. And with that mistake, Thrasher is now finally into the lead. Does Pablo take second away too? No, he doesn't. Two Mustang drivers too wide to that same corner. They're, they were at a dead heat. Thomas gets a better exit though, and he will defend. No, nope, Tyler's stuck on the outside through two and three, but will still eventually lose. Nefrisco is behind the Euro 34 driver. Meanwhile, they're going to go two by two. Pablo Hernandez is actually going to clear Taylor before we get to the corner. Nefrisco, not so much, but Manuel forced to take to the curb just to not run into the guy. And that puts the Lamborghini up another spot. Hernandez and Taylor bumper to bumper going through the exit of the corkscrew. Not sure how this has happened. So here goes Wayne Hansen down into turn one. He gets into the back of Kanashimi. And I mean, yeah, that's that's self-inflicted right there. Kanashimi continued on as if nothing happened. She's still in I mean she's in 14th, but she continued on anyway. Big momentum for DePrisco exiting the final turn. Aggressive braking from Taylor is her only hope to stay on the podium. The aggressive braking it shall be. A weird exit from both cars, but I think DePrisco is going to have himself a podium in his second race in the Challenge Series. Tyler could never find another response on uh, O'Reilly. And neither could find a way to keep, uh, uh, to get around, rather, the uh, R34 Manuel, who, well, I mean, he hasn't impressed, I would say, as here comes Thomas O'Reilly as we speak. And, like, the one corner that he really wouldn't pass in in real life is the one corner they keep making passes in here. And stuck on the outside, there really isn't a lot you can do about it except uh, uh, find a new pair of underwear. I say I wouldn't say he's really impressed, but he hasn't really done terribly either. He's still going to get a top six. And as he heads toward the final turn, I believe this actually would be his second win here. And Thrasher will be the victor at Laguna Seca. Uh, a home track triumph. And DePrisco will take a podium in his second start in the Challenge Series. After starting 11th. And the fastest lap, just to rub it all in.
So Thrasher is currently the points leader. Had a marginally better race than Hikari did, and his Silverstone was slightly better than Hikari's Laguna Seca. And we're gonna have a bit of a weird melee race going as we head into Brant's Hatch Indy Circuit for five laps. It'll be a very short race. I don't think this race will go for more than five minutes. So you better hope the starting grids are nice to you, or you better get a move on. Alright, we are at the starting grid for Brand Hatch Indy. This is like sprint race to end all sprint races. And uh well I think the biggest notable thing here is Duprisco coming off of a podium in his second race and a decent finish at Silverstone starts fourth. Hernandez has also had decent races up to this point and he's the pole sitter. Hikari is in a manageable spot, maybe, and Thrasher has some work to do. But there's not a lot of time to do it, because uh, this race is probably only going to take, like, I don't know, three minutes and a half, maybe, of uh, run time, so better get it done and get it done quick. It does mean you get to the passing zones of turns one and two more often, though, so I guess they're Matt in mind. <laughs> All-wheel drive van! <laughs> Travis Wilde is gonna lead into turn one. Hernandez is probably really questioning his life choices right about now. Frisco has already managed to seize the third spot away from Taylor. I would assume just more horsepower being the culprit there. The Elise is undoubtedly one of the weaker vehicles in this tier. Uh, Hans Hansen is trying to prove that by attempting to get around Flynn. Horsepower might allow him. Uh, Pablo goes wide through two. And DeFrisco, ever the opportunist, as we learned in his uh, promotional division races, is going to take full advantage of that blunder, and he is now running second. And now he's got to go chase after the SUP that's leading the race. <laughs> why? <laughs> it's not so much why is this a thing, it's why did I even think it would make any sense? Because I did this knowing that full well that this could happen. And then it still let it happen anyway. Hanson looking for a cheeky dive on Macintosh. He's gonna be there. Rides all of the curb. And there's the pass for you. It's a uh, Yarno Truly train coming off of Travis. Um, that KN actually has some legitimate horsepower. I think I may have mentioned a Silverstone, but yeah. Um, it actually has some power. It's got like a V8 in there or something like that. It's not quite a normal Porsche engine, but it's still pretty powerful. As you can see, it's actually out dragging the Lamborghini Countach, so I think that in and of itself is evidence enough. And it's also all-wheel drive, which means that in Travis's case, if he's confident that he's got the thing turned in, he can exit the corner with no fear. Thrasher and O'Reilly, a battle for the ages going on between these two, like, 
These two are always, like, scrapping away, it seems like. These two Ford rivals just never let up. One just likes the Mustangs and the normal Fords. The other one has the more refined taste for his Ford machinery and likes stuff like the Cobra and the GT40 and the, uh, well, you know, stuff like that. He doesn't much prefer to drive Mustangs. I think they're overrated, so. Uh, DeFrisco has no answer for the SUV into two. He desperately tries to go outside and do some sort of weird reverse sin, but don't work. A handsome animal has made work of the Mustangs in his path. He's caught up by Taylor's weak top speed, so he will not be able to get fourth away from her, I don't think, unless something crazy happens here. Um, but despite Hernandez and Frisco's best efforts, Travis Wilde and a Porsche flipping KN is gonna win at Brands Hatch Indy. And, uh, I, every day we stray further from God. Only Travis, only a two-time champion could ever pull that off. Frickin' replay! DePrisco is suddenly your points leader, and for the points lead, he is having to fend off Pablo Hernandez and Thrasher and Hikari, but mainly Pablo Hernandez, the Tier A champion from the previous year. Pablo is probably looking to make sure that the uh, only rookie to win a champion in his debut championship, or one, only rookie to win his debut championship, is a record that he keeps exclusively to himself, and I'm sure he would like the second one. But DeFrisco is consistently running in like the top five. No wins yet, but I think the way that this is going, uh, it shouldn't take much longer. And just the race is in. Everybody has scored multiple points. Sometimes we get championships where somebody doesn't score at all through the entire thing. So that's always a good sign that everyone has scored something. And even in theory, uh, Kanashimi is only two race wins away from being the points leader under, like, superior circumstances. Anyway, as we hide into Highlands Drift for the final race of the first episode of Year 3. And I was totally wrong, Brant's Hatch D is a 55 second lap, not 45. So that was a five minute race, despite me thinking that it wouldn't be. Uh, anyway, into the Highlands Drift Circuit, which should be a pretty lengthy one. I think this might take you eight minutes. Wow. Well, it's uh, the rich get richer here at the Highlands Drift Circuit. Dominic DeFrisco is the pole sitter. He might get outclassed on the apps on like right off the start by Manuel's all-wheel drive GTR, but from there. His only real threat is probably going to be Macintosh for the win. Thrasher maybe, but he's going to have to get through a few cars if he's going to challenge for this win. It would certainly help his chances of winning the championship if he could do that, but I'm not sure. They are going to be too wide, and as anticipated, Manuel is going to get the better start, and so he will be your leader exiting the first corner. To learn from the last Tier A championship, uh, don't use the short circuit here because it's pathetic. Asher already made his way past Taylor, looking to do the same thing on Tyler. Manuel and DeBrisco too wide. Two rookie drivers battling for the lead of the race. With Hikari not so far away. Also, why is it always foggy here? 
I get Scotland moisture in the air, but like, oh my god, it's just sad. Nefrisco has escaped with the lead for now. It'll just now be a matter of time to see if he can stay there. Will one of the Mustang drivers put up a challenge for it? They're currently putting up a challenge amongst themselves, though, so they're a little bit distracted. Kuntosh, Skyline, Skyline, Mustang, Mustang. Taylor is the only spoiler in what's essentially a Noah's Arcian race for the top six. Hanson C. Thrasher is offline and he is going to make full advantage. Taylor is going to be sort of obstructive though, but that will not stop him anywhere. Even a little bit of grass can't stop Hanson from making a move. Yeah, this doesn't take me as a track, but the SUV would be enjoying itself, and so Tra Travis is going to go from first place to last place here. That's a weird set of turns. Wow, Macintosh is all over Taniguchi's taillights right now. And that is one lap in the books. So, it'll be a five minute race, minus me talking. A bizarre Skyline double podium at the moment. I say bizarre because the Skyline is one of the weaker vehicles in Tier A up there with the Lotus Elise and the uh, Mazda RX-7. Interestingly, the RX-7 did have a good lap time, but I think it just doesn't have very good top speed or power. Or maybe it's only good at Barcelona and that's it. I don't see how that would ever be the case, but it's possible. Tyler tried to sneak himself in there. Wayne Hansen has suddenly made an appearance. Wayne Hansen certainly knows the name of the guy in the lead and he does not like it. He's going to he's gonna pull the adage of he wants something done right and you gotta do it yourself. He's just gonna muscle his way around Hikari. Hikari just basically has to take evasive action if he wants to not get slammed into a guardrail. But I think for Hansen, it may be a day late and a dollar short. Um, if he's lucky, he'll get back to the back of Manuel, but he's not going to be able to make a pass in time. We are simply running out of turns. And DePrisco is certainly going to be impressing after this race. He's finally going to break through. And he's going to win the race at the Highlands Drift Circuit after starting on the pole. Not really that impressive when you think about it in that light, but he still won exactly when he needs to to make that points gap grow. Hansen could not find a way around Manuel. McIntosh is going to make a last second, maybe overtake on Taniguchi. I have no idea who got that. Uh, Tyler got that by mere inches. 16 one thousandths of a second. Now it is a 15 point lead for DePrisco, an entire race worth of points between him and Taniguchi. And it's only, you know, it only is a bigger difference from there on down. Hernandez did not have the race he needed to have. 
I don't even remember where he started in that race, but clearly it wasn't very good because he scored nothing. So that will do it for Tier A, for this episode of Tier A, anyway. Uh, yeah, the Challenge Series is back. Like, the actual thing. I mean, we've had the Twisted Invitationals this whole time. But, you know, now we have the real deal back in full swing. And the beat goes on.